Hello, this is David Toller with Supplemental Seminary, and in this episode, I want to talk to you about uh, condenser microphones. What is a condenser microphone, and how does it work? Our example is one that I have that I'm trying out right now from Sweetwater, and I'll determine whether or not I'll keep it or send it back, but I want to give it a try. And what I like about this particular microphone is it's a great illustration of what a condenser microphone really is. What I like is up here you can see the capsule and the circular capsule that's up here, and that's what makes a condenser microphone. It has this, at times, uh, these capsules on the inside that we speak into, and it doesn't have the way the metal grill is. That's one of the reasons I'm trying out, because I just like the way it looks, and it's a good example of a condenser microphone and just the capsule itself. So that's our example, which is the blue blackout Oh, excuse me, Blue Spark SL Blackout Edition. As you can see, what came in the box was, of course, the microphone. It does come with a shock mount. And also it comes with this metal case that you see here, which is pretty decent quality. And so that's what comes in the box. Now it does have two buttons on the microphone. Now, some microphones have buttons and some do not. This actually has two buttons, one of which is a 100 hertz low cut filter switch, also known as a high pass. So in other words, in the 100 hertz range, there's not much data below that in the human voice that's beneficial. And so it's just going to roll that off. I actually do have that engaged right now to only allow one way we could look at it is a low cut filter that it's going to drop off those frequencies under 100 hertz. Or another way to look at it, it's only going to allow anything over 100 hertz to pass. So it's also called a high pass filter. And this is to avoid, avoid rumble room noise like in the background and that type of thing. The next button on here is a negative 20 decibel pad switch. I actually have not engaged that. That would protect your audio from distortion caused by loud noises or sources. Now, since I'm using this for voiceover, so to speak, and video, I've left that alone. So let's move to the next thing about condenser microphones. This is an XLR microphone, meaning that it takes, as I lift this up, you can see it takes the three pin female XR, XLR cable and that XLR cable is going to go down as a male into, and I'm using for this example, a Focusrite iTrack Solo Edition audio interface. And you can see on the interface, I've connected into the XLR port, and I have the gain set, I believe, at about 1 o'clock. And then you see I have my monitor for my headphones as well. The red button is very important when it comes to condenser microphones. I have engaged 48 volt phantom power. And so when you are using a condenser microphone, they require 48 volt of phantom power. I've had churches call me and say, our microphones are not working. Would you come look at those? And I said, I'd be glad to look at them only to discover they have not engaged 48 volt phantom power for the condenser microphones. Dynamic microphones do not require their components on the inside to electrify and to fire up the components. However, a condenser microphone needs the 48 volt phantom power engaged in order to power the microphone. So it is an XLR mic. You will need an audio interface, as I'm using right now, that is taking an XLR to the audio interface, the focus right, and then that's taken into my computer at the USB connection. All right, it does have a cardioid pickup pattern. And like I said, that's the reason I like this microphone is because of the grill and the one inch diameter large diaphragm condenser microphone is what this is. So really without the grill and all on it, you can see what we're really speaking into and what it's made of. So right here you see a one inch capsule that makes up the condenser microphone. And of course I like this black matte finish and the silver on there as well. But it has a cardioid pickup pattern. So when you're looking at a microphone, you need to know what type of pickup pattern it has. 
And what we mean by that is some microphones are omnidirectional, meaning they're going to pick up 360 degrees around the microphone. It may be be unidirectional, which is going to pick up the first half of the microphone. It, and then you have uh, other uh, super or hypercardioid pickup patterns. But this one has one we're probably going to be real familiar with if you uh, kind of in the realm that I'm in. That's going to be a cardioid pickup pattern, meaning the microphone is going to pick up from the front, uh, right on axis, speaking in, in directly into the capsule, and it's going to pick up some around. As you see, I move a little bit over to the sides. It's going to pick me up until I go a little bit too far, and then you're going to lose the audio. And then when I come back, it's going to pick. It's only picking up in this area right here. Okay. So if I turn the microphone, you can tell you're going to lose my voice. It is not going to pick up much from the sides, and that is that creaking is my boom arm. And then of course you're going to lose me and the audio is greatly diminished picking up from the back. So that's the reason you need to know, is your microphone a microphone that's gonna pick up from the top, the side, the back, and so forth. So I know that this one is a side address microphone. I speak directly into the capsule. A good rule of thumb is hang 10, six inches away from the microphone. And we'll talk about some helpful hints here in just a minute. And so it has a cardioid pickup pattern. Just think about a cardiologist. And what does a cardiologist do? A cardiologist works on the heart. And so basically you can imagine a heart shape in the front of this, and that's how it's going to pick up. It is a condenser microphone, meaning it's a large diaphragm condenser. It is more sensitive. All right. That can be good or bad. It's good in the sense that it's going to pick up all the information, the audio information that it's picking up. It's very sensitive. It's going to get all those noises that you want, uh, want or don't want in there. So in a good sense, it's more sensitive. It's going to pick up everything, basically. It's going to pick up uh, all kinds of noise. But on the opposite side of that, the bad thing is it's going to pick up room noise. It's going to pick up mouth noise when we are dehydrated, when we're talking to the microphone and that type of thing. It's going to you're going to have room noise and everything else. So it needs to be in a controlled environment. In fact, right now, you let me know in the description how you think this microphone sounds. I'm in a semi-controlled environment. I have audio treatment behind the camera, and I'm speaking directly uh, towards that and getting that uh, reflections. Of course, I am getting some reflections off my two monitors here as well, but that's something else you need to keep in mind. So it needs to be in a, a quiet, controlled environment. And something else that you need to just keep in mind, that it does require 48 volt phantom power that is supplied by your mixer. Yeah, I could plug this up to our soundboard or mixer in our church and use it as long as I have 48 volt phantom power engaged. And or for a studio like I'm in right now, that you would need an audio interface that and most of them do uh, supply 48 volt phantom power. Next, let's talk about how to connect it. And you can see that I mentioned before, female XLR to male XLR into an audio interface and mixer. I will put that all the links to this microphone, the cables and things that I use, the audio interface that I'm using right now, and put those in the link in the description below of what I would recommend if you'd like to get this set up. All right, so remember, we need to set the gain. Now, here's something very important. Setting the gain on this uh, Focusrite audio interface, as you can see, I have it on about one o'clock. Now, what I'm gonna do in post-processing is I'm gonna boost the gain, and I'll put that on the screen now so you know how much I had to boost it. And the reason for that is I didn't wanna crank up the gain as I'm making this recording right now, because the more you crank up the gain, the more it is gonna introduce more ambient room noise and things in the room, and it's gonna emphasize, as it's so sensitive, it's gonna emphasize those things as well. So that is one of the reasons that I'm gonna boost in, in post-production. Let me give you a couple helpful hints when it comes to condenser microphones. Find a quiet place to record. And so one of the things that I've had to do is I do have a heating unit in here in this room and I've turned that off as well as a dehumidifier in this room as well. I do have a coffee maker going right now because I am drinking coffee at the moment. And so you may hear that 
click on or off during this video. So you can see that you want to turn off all the noises. You want to get in a quiet space. You may be recording in a basement. I know I have before and try to do a recording and your kids are running across upstairs. It's going to pick that up. If you have water running through your pipes in your basement, it's going to pick that up. It's going to pick up the washer, the dryer, the dishwasher in the other room uh, on the other side of the house. It's going to pick up all those things. It's going to pick up lawnmowers outside. And so unless you have a controlled environment, I really wouldn't recommend a condenser microphone unless you had a good quiet space to record in. Next, when you speak into a microphone, especially a condenser, what I like about this one, it doesn't really cover my face. And you can see I'm speaking across the capsule of the microphone instead of speaking directly into it, because if I speak directly into it, I can get what we call plosives. We say the letter P is emphasized. So that burst of air that comes out of her mouth. So if I just speak off axis of my mouth like this, I get a good clear sound. And also it, when I say the, the letter P or B or T, it doesn't emphasize that as much and I'm not sending that burst of air. Now there are some things that you can buy like a pop filter or a pop shield, that type of thing. But I kind of like the microphone the way it is and I like it because it doesn't block so much of my face and I can speak directly across to it. So speak off axis to avoid plosives. Next we see it has a shock mount and the shock mount, what it allows to do is if I bump the microphone, as I'm speaking, it's going to absorb through these little rubber band like things here to absorb that vibration and that bump as well. If I was to hit the, the boom arm here, it's going to take in some of that absorb, absorb that vibration. And then if I was to hit the desk, it's going to try to absorb that. Of course, when you're using a condenser microphone, there are some things also you need to keep in mind that it's going to pick up everything. In fact, I have this code on for an example that as I move around, I want you to hear that, that you even think about your clothes, typing on your keyboard, your mouse, and the noises that you're making there. It's going to pick all that up and everything in the room. So you, you really have to think different when you're using a condenser microphone. Well, this is David Toller with Supplemental Seminary. And if you found value out of this video, please give me a like and a comment below if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to add. I like this microphone. I'm going to give it a shot. I kind of like the way it sounds. It's a little mid forward bright on the other end, which is something else we could look at sometime with your frequency responses. And so it's a little bright. I haven't done anything in post process and this is just the plain microphone and the way it sounds right out of the box going to audio interface. I'm not going to add any compression, any effects of any kind in post-production. This is just what it sounds like coming out of the box and plugging it up. And you let me know how it sounds in the description below. And in the meantime, you take care and let me know what else we can talk about audio related. And we'll see you in the next video.